is we are trying to blow up the walled gardens of Web2 that completely passively monetize players across the world every single day and give very little back to that ecosystem. <music>My journey to play Ember has been one of just randomness. I just kind of fell into law, but I always had this creative gene in, in me. I've always enjoyed just the creative side, right? Just like human experiences and creativity and how people think. So for me, like did my law degree and then kind of fell early on into to advertising, creating content to basically, yeah, ultimately inspire consumers, but at a sort of more cynical level to, to try and get someone to feel something for a brand or a piece of content. Um, and, and then really that was my sort of then journey into really where, where I am now in gaming. And I think that's the great thing about gaming culturally is there's a home for everyone. So I've always loved like playing these kind of arcade casual games, but increasingly now I love games that have a bit of a story to them. And that's the great thing about the games that, that we make. Like sometimes I feel like we don't make games, right? We're trying to just make really aspirational content that's got a direct link to, to popular culture. And, and for me, it's just these little moments when you know, you're on a subway or a plane and you see someone playing your game, right? I kind of want to go up to them and be like a fanboy and go, oh my God, you're playing my game. My early time with blockchain actually came through a really good friend of mine and advisor in our company and CEO of our uh, Chris Gale. Um, when we exited our first company, he just went deep into to blockchain and I remember being on a rooftop balcony somewhere in London. Chris was got a few of us together to explain what he was doing and I was like, I mean, he's one of the smartest guys that I know. And I'm like, I don't really understand what he's talking about, but it's it's Chris and wherever he is, he's always early. This is going to be big. And then went away and just hit Google and was like, right, what is Chris actually talking about? And then like anything, you just it's just that curiosity kicks in and you just start going down a rabbit hole, talking with your network, you know, attending conferences. And then before you know it, you're you know, deep into, you're deep into Web3 and it's just, there's no way out, right? So I'm, I'm really excited about making blockchain meaningful to, to consumers, right? I use this word like to the team about our job is to make blockchain invisible, but make the games more fun. How do we do that? So I think where blockchain technology is gonna go is, is this. I think this idea of community is really interesting. I don't think we've found a meaningful way yet to really put sort of this, this word of ownership into consumers that actually means something beyond this sort of play to earn concept that I, I don't agree with, right? Because gaming's not a job. Gaming isn't always will be just a huge cultural like moment for people, but it should be around sort of players equally putting something in and getting something back from gaming, whatever that, whatever that is, right? Whether it's merchandise, whether it's like an IRL meetup. So I think there's a really interesting framework here for generally building these global communities that have a sense of being and a home within within gaming, right? Because gaming doesn't judge you for whoever you are. You can be whoever you want, and I love that idea. And then I think from a technology perspective, we're, we're on route to delivering on this concept of interoperability. We weren't seeing this fundamental consumer need for blockchain, right? So for us, we were like, well, our Web2 games are doing pretty good, right? Our team are still really hungry, making great games. Players are downloading them, like we're having number one games. Um, why, do we need, why do we need to bring blockchain into it? So part of it was just then spending more time just researching and understanding. And our thought was this, well, why in Web2 the, the players contribute so much to mobile games in terms of like their time, their commitment, sharing stuff on social media? Do they not get any direct benefit from that time? Yet there are these companies that are generating billions of dollars in advertising off the back of their time. So we love this, this idea about actually decentralizing the billion dollar Web2 ad, ad industry and putting that in the hands of, of players, um, but also creators as well. So that anyone that is creating value, whatever that can be to our mobile games, should in return get value for their time and contribution to, to the economy. So our, our journey to Nier was a fun one because we're, we're kind of unique that we're not a typical Web3 gaming business where you need to look at sort of on-chain players and active communities already there. All of our players are in the app stores, right? 
and they know nothing about blockchain, right? They don't know what tokens are. So really it made it a lot easier for us because it really came down to, first and foremost, the technology. So what we were looking for is who had an intuitive wallet that was built that I could just literally put my email address in and just enter this experience or content that I wanted to join. So that was the first thing. We love Nier's wallet. It's just really seamless. And the second piece was uh, more on the sort of scalability of the, the, the network side, because obviously there's been some well-publicized um, concerns in that space. And then the third thing was was the community, right? And when I say community, what what I mean by that is obviously the sort of general feeling of the near community, but what really drives us is working alongside fellow entrepreneurs and builders. And what kind of blew us away early on was what resonated with me about Near is it reminded me of my early days in like tech marketing, right? Is that within Near you have this family of people trying to build like the legitimate businesses that will be leading in the next five, ten years, building on Nier's infrastructure. This is really the sort of seminal moment of where we're going to see blockchain and gaming probably split ways, where you're going to have those amazing companies in Web2 that have great IP and amazing audiences, but you know they're still Web2 businesses with share prices and they just have to operate a certain way. And then you're going to get these new upstarts, like people keep saying, well, when's the supercell of Web3 going to come along. It's, it's going to be here and there's going to be a lot of them, but they're going to be driven and owned by, by players and it's really exciting.